Here we are with Ron Young. And Ronnie Haskins. How you doing, yeah. man? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Bless. Bless, 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 brother. Bless. Welcome, everybody. If you're watching live or if you want to watch it on a replay, it's Ronnie Haskins with Ron Young. And this is the Hard Earned Knowledge Podcast. We're going to talk to him today. He's got an extraordinary uh, story that we want to learn from. And uh, this channel is all about learning, learning, and more learning, and adapting, and getting better as business people, entrepreneurs, whatever your chosen field is, right? We think we can all learn from everybody. So I'm super excited to have you on today, man. I think we can learn a lot from you today. Man, it's an honor, for sure. So uh, tell me what's going on in your life. Are you ready for Christmas? Man, are you ever ready for Christmas, man? <laughs> you've, had a, you've had a tumultuous couple of weeks. Yeah, man. You know, having stepkids and my, my daughter and everything. Man, it's just a lot right now all going on at the same time. So, yeah, um, we're almost there. Um, we'll probably be finished by Friday or Saturday. And then we're having the big feast on Sunday. I got you, dude. Are you smoking anything? What you cooking? Um, actually I'm making one of my famous dishes. I'm making a dish that's called chicken a la ron. Oh, and, wow. um, yeah, it's a, it's a specialty that I make and all the kids requested it and I make some macaroni and cheese and, um, salad and, and a little bit of, uh, my, my wife, she's from Poland. So she eats no meat on, um, Christmas Eve. So that's all on us. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that sounds exciting, man. I know you're going to have a warm Christmas and it's going to be fun with the family. And, uh, you know, God bless you and your family. How about you, my friend? Uh, yeah, so we have our traditional uh, Christmas Eve at some realtors you may know. You know, uh, Linda L Linda Landry and, and Bob Landry? I've heard, I know Bob Landry. I, I've heard of Linda. Yeah, Linda's his wife. So Linda is my wife's aunt. And so every year we're at their house Christmas Eve. And, you know, they put on a big spread, lots of food. Um, and then we do a gift exchange. And that's always crazy because, you know, it's the white elephant style. So you, you, everybody brings a gift. Nobody knows who's going to get it. You draw numbers and then people can steal it. So, <laughs> you know, there's always one or two items. I'm like, damn, I wish I could get that. But, you know. <laughs> all the, about key, the key is to get the last number in the game, right? Yeah, dude. If you get number 10 or whatever it is, then you get the last pick. So. That's the key. And then we do, after that, we do a white elephant, which, you know, last year I left with a hatchet and some jack stands for my car. Um, people just put in whatever they want to get rid of out of their house into these boxes. And you end up drawing those things. And uh, it's a lot of laughs unless you're the brunt of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. For sure. So. All right, looks like you're busy in your car. So let's talk about things today. We're going to talk about some questions. I'm going to go through them. It's all about you today. Ron works for Contour Mortgage. He is the actual, you're the branch manager, right? Yes, sir. And so you develop the, the business model. You're helping uh, mortgage lending uh, officers grow underneath you and building your business. Tell us a little bit about your business. You know, a bit. this will be 22 years, January 16th, Ben, of doing this. And um, I've left to go do other things and nothing for me equates to doing business like doing mortgages. I love it. Um, the thing that uh, sets me aside and sets a, a contour mortgage aside is the first thing we start with is culture and just building inside of our people what it takes to build relationships, not only with the client that is using our product, not only the people that they're working with, but more importantly, like what's going on inside of you? Because you as a human being, you're the one that's affecting the people that you're interacting with. Yeah. And so from top down, you know, as the branch manager at Contour Mortgage, I'm always doing self-improvement stuff to give myself the ability and the awareness of like what's going on in our culture. And our culture as a society, whether a person comes to me and they're a first time home buyer or they're buying an investment property or buying an apartment building, they want to be treated some kind of way. Yeah. And so my responsibility is to understand what that way is and make sure that that's delivered in a very positive way. I love it. I love it. And you love what you do, huh? Love it. 
22 years. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. So I don't need to ask you that first question was, I, I guess I can go back to it. How did, here's the first question of the day. How did you get started in this business, in the mortgage business 22 years ago? You know, it's a, uh, it's a um, <laughs> polymoron kind of conversation. And it's like this, um, I was broke as a joke. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Right. And I was looking through the newspaper and I said, man, I need to find a job. And there was this big sign that said mortgages, exclamation point, exclamation point. And I was like, man, I need to do something. And they said, you can make $25 an hour. And you go back 22 years ago, that was a bunch of money back then, you know? That's all the money. Yeah. Right. And so I, um, I called the ad and the guy's like, man, if you can get on the phone with people, and you can make some calls. He said, I'll hire you. I said, I'll get on the phone with people. Let's do it. And so the next day I was working and um, I was on the lender side of the business. And then uh, one day, as time would have it, I ended up coming on to the, to the broker side of things. And I was off to the races. And ever since, I haven't really looked back. It's been great. That's really good, man. So let me make sure I'm summarizing this. So you were looking for a job. You had nothing going on. Broke as a joke. But sales was available. Mortgages was available. You got in. Never looked back. Never looked back. I love it. it that, that's like a that's like a common story for a lot of people. It's like, you know, they call it the power of broke. You know, like when your options are very small, you you take take what's available and you work it the hardest that you can. And now you're the branch manager. Right. I actually, in my career path, I've, uh, when I first started off into the business, uh, within three years, I was a business owner. Wow. Yeah. And I was a business owner all the way through 2009 when the collapse of the economy happened. Yeah. Right. And then, um, I, I went back to just being a loan officer and then the market was too tight. So I went and worked for realtor.com for a little bit and uh, realtor.com was a good run for like five years and sold cars for a little bit, which, um, you know, it, it, that's always going to be a bug for me because I love selling <laughs> cars, man. Um, and, but there's nothing more that I love giving people the opportunity to do is to connect with buying a house. It's a, it's the greatest thing to watch people's eyes light up and watch the happiness that they have in their heart for being able to accomplish their goals. Yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of love for what you do, Ron. That's, that's important. I like to hear that, man. That's cool. All right. All right. So let's get into some more challenging questions. Here you go. What challenges have you faced in 2022? Whew. Interest rates. <laughs> yeah. yeah, interest rates has been a big deal because um, in my business, there's one of two ways that you can foster relationships, either A, with existing clients that are looking to do something to make their financial structure better, which would be known as refinancing, yeah, or B, finding new clients that are looking to buy homes and with interest rates being higher this year, it's been a little bit of a deterrent for a lot of people to wanting to do anything immediately. So yeah. there was a lull this year. So numbers were down definitively this year. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, so what have you noticed in the business and in the industry when the interest rates changed? Like, what are you prepared to do about it? Like, did you have a did you have a message for your team, a plan of execution or? double down on prospecting? I mean, what, what's the plan from here? So that's a great question. Um, one of the things that we really want to do is to educate the client. When I first got into the mortgage business 22 years ago, January 16th, wow. interest rates were 9.75%. So this is not new. It's not new. And the thing is, is that people got ingrained into our culture of hearing that interest rates are so low, 1%, 2%, 3%. And everybody got enamored with the fact that that's how they were always going to be. And our country was dying at the time when those things were happening. Yeah. And so the thing that I'm really ingraining inside of our uh, culture, again, is really education right now. 
People need to understand that interest rates are typically going to be anywhere between six and 8% yeah. if we're in a healthy economy. And so helping people to understand, you know, if you have credit cards and most credit cards for people that have credit cards are sitting at 26, 27, 30%, yeah. and you're carrying a 10, 12, $15,000 balance on it, you're getting raked over the coals on that, right? Yes, sir. So it's a, okay. So now you get an interest rate that's 6% on your house to be able to reduce some of that debt and maybe pay off a car loan, maybe pay off student loans and all that sort of stuff. Now you've consolidated all these things into something that you're actually getting a tax advantage for. Yeah. Yeah. That's good info. You can write off the interest, right? Right. And you plan on keep that. You le you're talking about leveraging your property. That's correct. Yeah, I like that. And you can leverage your property and not have to go back to a 30-year mortgage. So for a lot of people, what will happen is, is they'll refinance the house and they'll just, okay, I'm just doing a 30-year loan. Well, if you can save enough money and leverage it so that you can do a shorter term, you can do a 25-year term, you can do a 20-year term, you can do a 15-year term, so long as it's affordable, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's what you have to look at is like when you're making all of these cost savings with what it is that you have as a debt, the ultimate game plan is, is at that point in time, then you can make a decision on, okay, what do I want to do to leverage myself better so that I can make even more money manifest? Yeah. You know, I think, you know, it, it's the, the goal is to pay off the debt, but you know, there's, there's smarter ways to do it. You know, as long as you're not going to run that credit card back up the next month, uh, then yeah, I mean, that's a, it's, it's a long-term strategy that can be employed for people to use. But I, I love what you're, where you're thinking is, man, like, Right now, during this market, lots of people are running for the hills. They don't want to do anything. So if you're a business owner watching this podcast, you know, what I'm doing by bringing on people is trying to learn. Like, what are you thinking about doing, Ron? Because it's the same. You know, it's, it doesn't matter what industry you, you're in. It's harder for everybody right now. And so what you said is education. Let's educate the consumer. Let's not just sell them. Let's talk to them. Let's help them see what they can do with this uh mortgage money that they need or, or whatever or leverage their property or whatever the whatever the situation is i love that you're thinking about it thinking out of the box like because the market's going to keep moving people are going to keep buying keep buying property keep doing loans keep doing mortgages is if you're going to get a piece of it or not is what's what the question is correct amen to that for sure 100 percent. okay all right well i like the way that you answer that man I, i'm writing these things down and taking notes for myself um culture was a great answer by the way it kills strategy at each. They say culture each strategy for breakfast. You know, if you look at the culture of a Chick-fil-A, you know what I mean? It's like you walk into that store, you 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 go in there and you're like, I'm in, I know how I'm going to get treated. There's no question that you're going to get cussed out. Ask what you're doing here. Can I help you? No, it's going to be my pleasure. You know, my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So if yes. the culture at Contour Mortgage is excellent, then everybody's going to feel it. They're going to love it. And even though times are hard, they're still going to make their decisions to purchase with you. Yeah. So, I mean, a little bit more into the culture aspect of Contour Mortgage, for example, like when you come to Contour Mortgage, there's going to be your name greeting you that we as a team are grateful for you coming to our house. Nice. You're going to be greeted when you come to our house. Nice. The next part is, is that we're going to start to learn things about you so that when we close on your loan, we can give you the gift that you would want to have. So we're going to get intel about like what your favorite colors are. We're going to get intel about different things that you're into because ultimately our relationship that we're looking to garner with you is to be long term. We're not looking to have just a one off. I love it. That's how that's how we survive. And I believe in that relationship sales. So that's really good to hear. Uh, I had, That's the first time I'm hearing about customer intel. That's that's really cool. You know, I've collected birthdays, but, uh, you know, what kind of dogs do you like? What colors do you like? Stuff like that. That's really in depth, man. Like you really get into the client so you can give them what they want. Not just not, not just what you think they want. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's really cool, man.
Okay. It makes the job way more enjoyable when we're behaving that way because, you know, having to go out on social media or, um, uh, okay, so a little bit of a lot of it, and I'm not going to like capture all of the sauce in, in the, right here, but I'll just give you a little peek. On our app, I'm in the process of developing with our developers that the um, on our app, you'll the first question that it asks a client when they come onto the app is, "Are you left-handed or right-handed?" For use and, of the app, that's correct. Wow! And then that way, when the when the person see, is on the app, they're going to be like left-handed or right-handed. I'm left-handed. Now everything will be configured for a left-handed person, so they'll feel heard. They don't usually. I mean, I'm not left-handed, but if you're using a phone, I have it's not configured seen that. for a right-handed person. Yes, that's interesting. That's cool. So then the second question we ask is what's your favorite color? Right. And then the screen will turn a hint of that color so they can feel in harmony with the app so they don't resist the app. Makes you feel at home. Right. Wow. So the intel that we start to gather, that intel starts getting sent back to us so that we're able to draw reference to like, okay, this person likes this color, this person likes this thing. Now we're starting to gather these things. And then when we go to closing and we present them with what it is that they would want, then it it's dialed in 100% of the time. Color coordinated and everything. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's next level. I like that. Did you come up with that? Yes. Holy mackerel. That's good. Man, you're intelligent. I like that, Ron. All right. This is a more difficult question. This is just about your philosophy. How do you overcome setbacks? Like, we don't have to go all the way back to 09 or the pandemic. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, we've had a lot of setbacks lately. But like, uh, how do you do it as a team, as a culture? your philosophy on overcoming setbacks? Man, I'll get more personal than that right now. Um, I just found out October 5th that I have um, stage five kidney failure. Dang, and, um, Yeah, and so in having that in my life, a lot of people look at things like, why is this happening to me? And oh my gosh, woe is me and all that sort of stuff. And the thing that I'll share with you is how I handle that particular setback is I'm a warrior and I'm a winner. And so at the end of the day, I'm going to put my warrior hat on and I'm going to put on what it takes to learn how to win through this. And it's like, I'm going to win through it and I'm going to, I'm going to fight through it. That's what I'm going to do. So it's like in 2022, when we've been dealing with everything with interest rates changing the whole entire year, instead of sitting there and crying about it, we've been looking to create strategy to make our culture stronger, yeah. our community stronger. And everybody inside of it stronger because our alliances and our partnerships are the lifeblood of our business. So rather than letting everybody sit around and talk about woe is me and whatnot, it's like, let's all band together and let's give ourselves the empowerment to be stronger. Yeah. And I hope people are picking up on this, man, because you're listening to a winner. 22 years in the mortgage industry, ups and downs. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your personal your journey with us, man. I didn't know. I knew you were going through some kind of surgery and I think I called you and we talked for a little bit, but uh, man, that was powerful. Thanks for sharing that. That's, um, that's amazing. Um, so you're dealing with that. You're getting through it in the midst of the rates going up. You're dealing with all of the stuff you're getting hit by all of that. And you're still grateful that you're going into Christmas to have your family together with your health and you're still moving forward. Yes, sir. That's great, man. That's great. So we're not going to go. Let's let's keep it positive. Let's go to um, this is a good question for you, because I know you're an entrepreneur at heart. You, ever since I met you, I think I met you in 2020 because um, we did a podcast before. But like this is a good one. What do you love most about being an entrepreneur? Mm. <sighs> it's kind of like being a captain of a ship. And setting out and there's this big old body of water and you're not sure where you want to go, but you just set the compass and let the boat just flow. 
Yeah. Ex exactly where it needs to go to. I love that, dude. That's awesome. You're right. It's like you're just going out on the ocean um, and you got all these people that depend on you, Captain. You know, so you got to figure it out. So every day it's a puzzle, right? You're trying to figure it out. What's the next course correction to get to our final destination, which you might not even know right now. I like that you said that, too. It's like you don't really have to have the end in mind at all times. Sometimes it's just working on the culture, like you're saying, making sure everybody knows they're, that we care about you on the team, not just the clients. You know, I like that you're doing that. Are you seeing the effects of this in your company? Yeah, it's uh, one of the things that I love about our company is the dexterity of everyone. You know, everybody knows their their place and their position on the boat. Yeah. You know, and, and it's and it's really cool to just watch everybody man up. Are they surprising you with their ingenuity? Yeah, because um, when you give a direction to somebody and you know that there's going to be rough waters or light waters or whatever the case may be in this analogy, um, you have to know that people are going to be there to steer the boat if I'm not able to be there. And I'm finding people standing up and they're like, Ron, you go deal with what you have to deal with because having the health issue that I'm dealing with is no joke. Right. Yeah. yeah. But um, people have been standing up and they've been like, let me steer the boat for a little while. And I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, dude. None, none of us get there alone, Ron. None of us. You know, I'm glad you got a team that cares about you and they're helping pick up the pieces while you're taking care of your health. Thank you. All right. Let's go into the next one. Tell us your favorite success story. Doesn't have to be business. Just whatever lights you up. Just, you, you know, the little story you keep in your heart. Like, I'm most proud of this. You know, my uh, I was just thinking about this. So it's uh, it's really cool to talk about this out loud. My success story is meeting my wife. OK. Um, <laughs> I've been a player for most of my life, man. <laughs> you ain't got to be a player no more. OK. And uh, and being a player, it, it ain't a bad thing. But the problem is, is that there's a lot of hearts that I broke on the way to oh, finding goodness. my wife. And when I found my wife, I was like, this woman has everything that I could ever imagine having in my life. She's a nurturer. She cares for me. She's fun. She's competitive. She's everything that I could ever want in my life. And, you know, like now that I'm sick, she's like the caretaker and, and everything all the time. That's good. And so the greatest success in my life is to find someone that loves me back. Oh, that's awesome, dude. I remember when we met, it was a little bit of a different story. And we have all watched your love story on Facebook over the last couple of years or whenever you, when you guys met, you know, uh, and the engagement and all that stuff. I mean, I'm very happy for you guys. I'm glad it's working out. Yeah, it's a uh, that's 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 by far the the biggest uh, part of my story right now. You can always make more money. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. All right, I got one last question for you, and then you can talk about whatever you want. Um, you know, life is a game of chess. We're always talking about. You know, checkers is fun, but like when it comes to running businesses and building a sales team or building a sale, if you're just if you're just simply in sales, you know, uh, you always have to be thinking about how you're going to keep your pipeline full or what's your next move, like what's your next chess move. So my question for you is, what are your next five business moves going into 23? Do you have them mapped out yet or? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the first thing that is on my agenda is making sure that I got enough gas in the boat to get out to sea. Okay. So what that looks like is, is that really taking stock of like, first of all, through my health concerns, do I have enough energy to be able to man the ship? And if I don't, how am I going to pass off some of that time to someone else to teach them to start manning the ship so that I can start grooming either my successor or my apprentice for what's next. Okay. Um, number two is creating more flow inside of our, or in the side of our business. So from a business development standpoint, getting in front of more realtors, getting in, for, in front of more investors, getting in, involved with more community involved people. 
people that are really involved with making a difference in city council, things that are going on inside of our planet here of Colorado Springs and beyond so okay. that we can be in the know so that we can be able to make impact that way. Uh, number three is really concentrating on the team and bringing the right bodies on board so that we make sure that from a logistical standpoint, the people that we bring on our team are helping to harbor an incredible relationship together. I'm not looking to just fill seats. I'm looking to build dreams Amen. together. Mm -hmm. Number four is making sure that all of my principles and everything that I talk to people about as far as the rules are right with regards to how people are living in their ethics and their standards. Mm -hmm. So it's just really reminding people that you don't have to go through the school of hard knocks to learn things. Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay, go ahead. Continue. Go ahead. So like if you, so what happens is, is in our life, we learn things like this when we're a little boy or a little girl, we, we run around and we're like, okay, there's this box that I got to jump over. So we jump over this box and then either we hit our head or we scarpe, scrape up our knee or whatever. And then we're like, okay, that's how I have to learn how to do anything. But that's not the truth. The truth is, is that you learn things based upon what your influence is. So that all starts with mommy, daddy, was mom there, dad there, who was there more and all this sort of stuff, who had the more influence over you and everything that goes along with that. So most of the time there's no box. But what happens is we feel in our life we have to run and jump over something to get somewhere because that's just what we interpret is the right way to do something. You with me? Uh oh. Ronnie, did I lose you? Ronnie? Well, everybody, I don't know what happened to Ronnie Haskins, but this is Ron Young, and we're on his show right now. And we got just disconnected a little bit. Hold on, he's calling me. And we're back. <laughs> we completely and, crashed over here. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so man, you were saying something so important. You said um number it was number four. What was number four? Um about uh principles. Okay. So making sure you know, everybody was doing the same thing and not fighting against you. Come again. Making sure people were doing the same thing and not fighting against you. No, well, principles is is a little bit simpler than that. It's um, it's rules. It's rules that one has inside of their life, and so like how we learn principles is usually through the the school of hard knocks. Yeah, yeah. And we're and we're running trying to jump over a box that isn't there, and we cause ourselves all of this pain and stress our whole life. And, and, and like I was telling you earlier, you know, the greatest success in my life is the marriage to my wife. Yes. Well, before then, 
I was proverbially trying to jump over the box. Yeah, going through the school of hard knocks. Right. All right. What's number five? And so number five is letting go of attachment of the outcome. So letting go of the attachment to the outcome. Yeah. So it's like one of the things that happens is I'll set my boat to go in a certain direction. And then I'm attached to whether my boat gets to a certain direction. When I set my course for the boat to go in this direction, it has no other choice but to go this direction. Okay. So being attached to it or not doesn't get me there. Yeah. Are you it's talking about like you got a row now, it's time to work. Is that what you mean? Like I'm trying to understand what your point is. Like so, never mind if we hit, hit hit the hit the the outcome, we still got to put the work in. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we got to put the work in, but like when I put the boat going north, right? I can be doing other things while the boat is going north because not necessarily everything that's going to happen is going to manifest in five minutes or five seconds or five days or five months or five years. It takes a minute for it to get there. Yes. And so once the boat is set in that direction, I can start working on the other things to make sure that when I get in the vicinity of where it is I'm looking to go, I'm now powerfully set up to make sure that I'm ready to not only make sure the boat's okay, but everybody else on the boat's okay, and that we can pick up some people and be ready to, hit, you know, do the next thing, if you will. Okay. I think I know what you're saying now, you know. Uh, Ron, you're working at a level that a lot of us can't keep up with. You you got a deep vision. So uh, I think that I'm going to have to sit down with you and discuss that a little bit further in detail, but I like where you're going with it. I really do. So what else would you like to share with us, my man? I mean, we talked about Christmas. We have some business questions. You want to share anything about your business or about Contour? or What would you like to talk about? You know, the thing um, I would like to share more than anything else in the world is, first of all, I wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yeah. We, we've been going through a tumultuous time the last couple years, yeah. and it seems like it's getting a little bit easier just yeah. because we're not confined at home yeah. But there's a lot of changes going on, and I just really hope people keep their eyes and ears open and don't just become zombies to the information that's being presented out there because that's a real thing that's going on with the economy, with things that are going on in the Ukraine, things that are going on in China, between China and Taiwan. Watch these things because these things ultimately affect what happens here. Yeah. Yeah, so they, yeah, they do. Apple is like, have you heard of um, iPod, iPhone City? Uh uh Yeah, man. That's a, I was listening to a podcast the other day about uh, Apple is now looking to get developers, you know, uh, manufacturers in different places. Uh, they're looking at Vietnam because, you know, they had a, a city that they have in China with up to it's like an island or something like 250,000 people doing shift changes. They live there. They go to work there. They do all this stuff. And um, they went to the zero COVID policy, locked down everybody. And these people, they couldn't go anywhere. You know, so they were just locked up in their little, whatever you want to call them, condominiums or whatever. All they do is go up and down the elevator and go to work every day and build iPhones. Um, 250,000 people, you know. And so since the COVID lockdown, obviously, is slowed to production. These people can't go outside. They got drones flying around telling people to go inside. I mean, they've taken it to a level that's like theatrical, like a movie. Yeah, wow. iPhone City. Check it out if you want to look at You said we're all connected. It all gets back here. Um, that's the latest piece of news that I read was about iPhone City. Well, I'm all over reading that today. I never even heard anything about it. Wow. Man, I mean, you know, you know what they said? I mean, the numbers were astronomical, like. The iPhone is like a big part of Apple's revenue. And this particular place that was building these phones, I don't remember the numbers, so I don't want to go on record for the numbers, but the number that they're responsible for was astronomical. It was huge. So that's all slowed down. You know, if you want an iMax Pro or, you know, iPhone 14 Pro right now, it, there might be a weight on it or whatever, but 
Um, there's reasons for it. It's all trickling back down. They can't get the pr production done. Well, that's what we got to always remember is that there's always somebody that's going to do something better or faster or wiser than we can. So we have to collaborate together. And Ronnie Haskins, as much as you want to collaborate with me, my brother, I'm telling you this right here on personal, on your studio. I want to do more of that because I love spending time with you. And I thank you for having me here on your show. I, well, I, hey, listen, the, the pleasure is mine. The honor is mine, man. You, you've educated me today. I wrote down notes. Um, I hope you guys did. This guy's been doing this 22 years. He's got, he manages a bunch of people. And I, this is why I'm doing this is because I feel like I need to get better and I need to learn more. And I also don't want to do it alone anymore. I've been doing it alone for a long time as far as building a business. And I would like to have more people like you around me that think like me and push me to the next level. So I'm glad that you're open to it. I'm, I feel grateful that you're open to it. Man, great minds, my friend. Great minds. Thank yeah, you man. so well, much. Uh, We'll have to pop by your office soon and check you guys out. I know where you're at. Um, uh, my friends own Goldmine, the the place right next to you, the uh, the golf course. So they're still open. So if your friends at at work need something to do, go over there and tell them that that Ronnie sent them. Go over there and play some golf. You know that's what I'm talking about. And yeah. don't forget about Fired Up Fridays. It's Fired a couple days away. I have to send. I have to check you out. What time do you do that on Fridays? Nine a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I'll check you out, Ron, man. I'll check you out. Hey, man, I appreciate you joining me today. As usual, thank you so much. Enjoy your Christmas. Uh, here's to your health. You'll be in my prayers, and we'll talk more offline. Okay, for sure. Thank you so much, Ronnie. And yes, bye, sir. everybody. Have a great day, my friend. Merry Christmas.